Welcome to How to Build a Trench Board Part 4, where we actually finally get to playing with sand and paint. Okay, so just a few, a couple things, you know, learn from my mistake kind of things uh, for the gluing. Uh, first off, uh, it's really expensive to uh, use this kind of glue all the time. Uh, so what I did is I just bought, for 20 bucks you can get a gallon of the glue get a couple of these and just refill them as you go along. Uh, that will save a ton of money. You know, these cost maybe a buck to two bucks. The eight ounce size is probably three bucks. A gallon is 19.20 is what I paid for it. Um, next thing is to, of course, have your sand with you. Uh, I bought the big thing of sand. Um, it, was actually fill sand instead of playground sand. Um, the playground sand is a little better. You just have to look too fine. You don't want too much uh, variation and you don't want the big rocks and shells, but you also don't want to have just a fine layer of sand. Uh, so what I ended up doing is just borrowing my wife's, one of the strainers out of the house and I uh, strained out all the big rocks. So um, on this board, I'm pretty much gonna be able to do a section at a time but if you have big open areas uh, doing the sand, you know, just put down the glue. Um, some people will mix it and make a glue slurry. Uh, what I've found is just the water on the brush. You keep the brush in a, you know, a thing of water. That will do enough mixing. Uh, one thing to be aware of is when you're doing it, the glue will sometimes pull away from the edges. Um, so you might have to just respread. Uh, if you're gonna do it in sections, and that's the only, the, the main reason that I'm doing this is, uh, you know, do a, you know, do as much as you're comfortable with spreading out, and then just I use an old blister pack, but uh, you know, spread your dirt. This is very messy, so you know, either have a shop vac or do it over a tarp. Um, but when you're spreading out the dirt, don't go all the way to the edge of the glue because what happens is you end up with a glue line and you'll notice it. Uh, so, you know, leave a little bit of space, then come back and do your next area. And that way it, it'll be, you know, without a seam. I don't want to say completely seamless because nothing's ever completely seamless. Um, other things to be aware of when you get to the edges I was just pretty messy when I went across the edges um, if you you might not want to have glue down on those edges because then you're gonna have glue on your seams and it'll get between your two boards uh, so those edges are you know worth paying attention to and then the other thing is uh, sometimes I'll, I'll only do maybe two or three boards at a time because there's a lot of sand to recapture. If you've got plenty and it doesn't matter, do them all at once. If, but if you're starting to run low on sand, do them a few at a time. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wait and do, be, I would normally do it all at once, but because I'm waiting on the corrugated cardboard to come, I, uh, I'm going to wait and do in between uh, the little uh, brick or uh, wooden planks uh, until after I get that cardboard up um, so that that way the sand's coming up against the cardboard instead of uh, you know sitting on top of the sand um, so it just looks like it's been used longer or a little older and then a similar similar thing with the boxes that I painted up and everything uh, I will get them glued in um, and then, then lay the sand there. Um, now when you come to edges like this and like the craters, um, you really don't want to do it all the way into it because then you're going to, well, it's sort of what look do you want. You can have a little bit of dried area um, where there's not as much sand so that it looks like, you know, it's a blast crater away and you've got your uh, area where the, the deep sand is not there or you can do it so it runs in so it looks a little older and like you've got you know sand running back into it. Uh, so it's just something to think about so that you stay consistent across the board. Um, 
or at least you've decided why you're going to do that. Um, I tend to like to leave a little bit of uh, space at the edge so it looks like it's been used and worn off and things have run across it. And then for the craters, I, I like it just because it has sort of a, to me, a more blasted appearance, um, you know, with sort of a dead zone around it. Um, other than that, that's really all there is to glue in the area. And so I will get back to gluing and once I have the top panels uh, glued and I do something different, I will come add more to this video. I'm sorry that this one is so disjointed, uh, but with lots of pieces not being around, it's just been a little bit harder. Okay, the next step is just to dump all the sand off the panels. As you can see, I just have a big tarp that I set up. And that way, once I've dumped all the sand, collect it all up, pour it back in the bucket for the next project. Um, because I have the trenches, just turned upside down. And then I do a bang on the bottom just to get the loose sand so it doesn't fall all over everywhere uh, at a later time. And there you have it. There's one of the panels with the sand done. Okay, so I began painting because my uh, corrugated cardstock hadn't come. Uh, and the brown I picked up as just a dark brown uh, looks okay. Uh, the, but the cardstock came, and so I have started working on that. Uh, so uh, basically all I'm doing is taking it lengthwise, I'm cutting it into uh, two inch wide strips, and then I'm marking it uh, to cut it uh, to size. A couple that ended up oversized, I'll just trim them up later. Uh, but uh, basically I tried some of this foam safe super glue and I tried Elmer's glue uh, and what I found is the Elmer's glue is actually sticking better uh, than the foam safe glue. Basically all I'm doing is you just take the glue after you've cut it to size and I'm just putting it on pretty generously, more generously than I probably should. Uh, get it into position, then I'm just going back and forth a little bit to thin it out. Get it a little sticky, just like you would with, with uh, wood. Uh, and then holding it down a couple minutes, or a couple seconds, and it's actually sticking pretty good. Uh, you know, and this is corrugated cardboard, so if it's a little bit off, well, you know, that's, that's just life and that's how it would be. Uh, and then my little short pieces, I just kind of have been walking around to try and conserve cardstock and go and wear, uh, trying to find places where it will fit. So like this actually fits here. So I'll just use that there. And that way I'm not cutting more than I need because it is uh, fairly expensive. I ended up buying a 12 pack, uh, which was like $16 uh, as opposed to the $2 each. Uh, at the hobby store. Uh, okay, so that is uh, starting to lay down the corrugated roofs, or the corrugated sides of the board, uh, which I wanted to do before I painted anyway, so it's nice that that came uh, about now. Uh, so once I get all of this laid and all of the different trenches, uh, I'll be back. Okay, so I've done the next step now, um, and basically I cut uh, posts to go with corrugated steel. Um, and I did it two different ways just to see how they look. One is the plastic preformed I beams, and the other is I just took cardstock. As you can see, I just cut it, leaving two of the ridges open. Uh, and these are mostly them over there. Um, and, and used those. There are some I beams, and then next to it, some of the double ridged ones. And then this whole side, I don't know if I'm kind of shadowing the light. Um, I tried to use those uh, in places that are a little more hidden. But, uh, you know, as I look at it, I actually, honestly, I kind of like the I-beams at this point. I mean, the, uh, the cardstock cut I-beams uh, a little better. I need to re-glue re that one. But uh, we'll see, once it's painted, we'll, we'll take another look. Uh, and then I had a couple of little small cutoff pieces I used, like they were broken I-beams. Uh, so, uh, if you want to go cheap route, uh, just use some cardstock to cut uh, the vertical beams. Uh, and it actually works pretty well and 
We'll see what it looks like after it's painted, but uh, in general, I think I like it a little bit better uh, than the plastic uh, high beams, and it is definitely a whole lot cheaper. So, okay, um, the next step will be to come in and touch up some of the sand uh, in the areas right around where the uh, the corrugated cardstock is, um, and then after that, we'll be. Uh, painting starting to oh I'm sorry then next we'll be gluing in the sand down in the trenches uh, and following that will be to begin uh, I'm going to paint these first and uh, just because with the silver color um, then I'll paint the others I'd rather the brown look like there's dirt and stuff coming onto the metal than metal magically growing into the dirt uh, so those are the next few steps so this is one of those completely optional pieces of things to do. What I'm doing is uh, I'm building basically a plastic area steel uh, circle that's the elevator that goes up and down. And uh, really to do this, I tried it a few different ways, wasn't working out. So I took a piece of wax paper, as you can see right here, I laid it out across, took a Sharpie, just circled it like that, took it inside, cut it out with some scissors, took one of my kids glue sticks, glued it down on a piece of uh, plastic card, cut that out, uh, and then it slide in. So that's that's step one. So don't have to do this completely optional, but uh, this is just uh, one of those little things I'm sticking on at the end. So the inserts are done uh, for the elevator shafts. What I did is I took those uh, plastic pieces that uh, I cut out. I actually took a little bit of uh, Magic Sculpt, uh, not my favorite to work with, but a lot cheaper than green stuff or anything. Uh, and I just flattened that out. Uh, then I took a little uh, diamond plate mold and pushed it on there. And then just use a dark brown, a middle brown, and an orange in a stippling fashion uh, to make them look sort of rusty. Uh, and then they will get glued in uh, like that. Um, but I want to wait until I've done the sand in the trenches before I do that. So uh, that will complete that step. Uh, so again, just something you can do or not do. You can just take, you can just paint it metal to look metal, uh, and that probably worked just as well. But anyway, I had them. I wanted to try out that little uh, diamond plate mold anyway. So that uh, is that step done. Okay, so I've done. This is the sand drying down in the trenches. Uh, so I just spread glue between the uh, planks and then uh, just poured in the sand. Uh, I went ahead and glued uh, these metal pieces in uh, so that uh, you know sand could kind of roll over those as well. And then I went around some of the edges and uh, just put some more glue in and laid some more sand uh, there just to bring it up to the edges of the what's going to be the corrugated steel. Uh, so while I'm waiting, I went ahead and painted that stuff black. Uh, I'll go ahead and maybe work on doing the stone work there, and then I will probably go ahead and cut the pieces for uh, the back here. Uh, so the next step after I do that will be to, I'm going to paint these silver, and then that way when this color uh, gets painted on the ground, if it runs over it just looks like dirt or mud uh, running over the sides. Okay, just a quick update as this is becoming sort of a project log as well. Um, painted the corrugated metal uh, in all the trenches and then I glued in, hard to see, slide back, but then I glued in uh, the corrugated uh, down in uh, the tunnels. Uh, next step, I'm going to let this, uh, the glue on the tunnel ones dry. Uh, and then the next step will be to start uh, painting the top side. Um, and as you can see, I've dumped out uh, most of the sand there. Uh, and I will paint down in there as well and then paint up all the details. Okay, I had some good weather yesterday, so I actually did a couple of steps uh, all together. So since the last time I checked in, I've done a dark brown here and it was just some uh, Walmart excess paint that I picked up uh, for half price, it's like five bucks for the quart. Uh, should be enough to do the whole project. Uh, 
went ahead and then painted down into the, the brown in uh, the ground there, the first coat there. It's going to be a slightly lighter color. Uh, and then I went ahead and painted in uh, the rust marks uh, on the corrugated steel. And then I went ahead and put in uh, some curved ones here. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with that, but uh, we've now done that. And then the, the last step I just did was I, laid, I took a very fine playground sand and I uh, glued it into these uh, down into the tunnels. What I found the easiest way is when you're laying it, just tilt it up and then you can roll the sand uh, down in it. Uh, otherwise it gets kind of tough to get the sand to slide back. Um, I also finished the bunker. Um, so the bunker section is done. Uh, it got a little bit warped with when I painted it for some reason, but not bad. Um, but it, all it was was a coat of uh, black, then a coat of dark gray, and then a dry brush of a medium gray, and a dry brush of a light gray. And then I just put in, you know, painted up a couple of little, you know, just a, just a very few sparse details, some extra grenade rounds down there. Um, uh, and then over there you can see that's with the flat piece when I don't want to use it. Uh, because I'm laying the sand, I have that one in there so that one will match up. Uh, and this fine layer of sand should not affect uh, the seating of that very much. Um, so what I have left to do next is I got to do all the craters. I'm going to do them as rock and then paint some dark kind of muddy stuff in there. Uh, paint these in here and then I need to go around and paint all of the little uh, extra doodads like you know the little cross beams I laid in there. There's not very many of them. I, like I said I tried to keep this very sparse so that I could put other terrain on top uh, and then I'll need to start doing sort of the highlighting uh, bits on the dirt uh, so it's not all one, one tone and uh, that's it. That's the end of part four so come on back for part five where we finish up the paint and take a tour of the final product.